what up everybody back again here with our negative number unit we are going to be doing an introduction to negative numbers so let's dive below sea level and see what we have in store today your objective today today i will be able to identify where the negative numbers are placed on a number line and how they relate to positive numbers so first we need to start with our math vocabulary positive numbers these are the numbers that you have been dealing with basically your entire life right so positive numbers are numbers to the right of the zero on the number line and these are the ones that we typically use on a day-to-day -day basis negative numbers are the numbers to the left of the zero on the number line and an integer is positive and negative whole numbers as well as zeros so when you're talking about an integer you're talking about all the positive numbers all the numbers to the right of zero on the number line to infinity and all the whole numbers to the left of the zero on the number line and we will be using these three math vocabulary terms the entire unit so make sure you write them down in your notes if you don't have your notes you can check the description of the video and you should find a link to a google doc where you can type in your notes or make a copy and print them thank you for that rewind and here we have a number line we started zero went to seven you've probably been using number lines your entire life to show the relationship between the numbers and the values right and we know as you move further to the right on the number line the values of the number get bigger okay a hundred is further to the right than a seven, right? So a hundred is a bigger value because it's further away from zero to the right. As you move left on the number line, right? The values get smaller, okay? So three is to the left of four, which means it's closer to zero. Three is less than four. Thinking of numbers being to the right or to the left of each other isn't something that you consciously think about often but it's something that you inherently know, right? You know that four is bigger than three. And then when you can visualize it on a number line, four is to the right of the three, it's really going to help you as we get into negative numbers. In everyday life, normally we stop at zero, right? We say you can't go below zero, but there's a whole set of numbers over here that are called negative numbers. And they work almost as a mirror to the positive numbers. As you go farther to the left away from zero, the numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller. The number line works just the same now. It's just got a whole nother half that you typically don't talk about. So if we look right here, we have positive four right here, okay? And we have negative four. When you look at those, you notice something, right? You notice that the positive four is one, two, three, four units away from zero, right? You can visualize that. And the negative four is also one, two, three, four units away from zero, but to the left. That's because the negative sign tells you to move to the left of zero four units. The positive four, the positive sign tells you to move to the right. Some of you have a question. Well, I never see a positive sign in front of a number. That's because it is a math convention, which you can see down here is kind of a math rule that's just agreed upon. If we wrote a positive sign in front of every number that was positive, that would take a long time and the numbers would look more confusing. So if you see a number without a negative sign, you can infer that it is a positive number, which is telling you to move to the right of zero. If you look at these, it looks like these are mere images of each other. They're both the same distance away from zero, but on opposite sides of zero. We would call these opposite numbers, right? And you can kind of connect them and see the symmetry. Here we have negative one and one. Both of them are one unit away from zero. The negative sign tells us we're moving one to the left. Here we have negative two and positive two, right? They're both two units away from zero, but the positive is to the right and the negative is to the left. And then we have negative three, whoop, try to fit that in there, and positive three. Again, both three units away from zero, but the negative sign told us to move to the left of zero. This leads us to our key thought today which is the positive and negative sign tell you the direction to move on the number line 
away from zero. So in today's lesson, when you're visualizing where to start, you're always going to start at zero. And then if there's a negative sign, it will tell you to move that many units to the left. And if there isn't a sign, then that means you can make the inference that that's a positive number and you're going to move that many units to the right. So you see the positive, you're thinking move right on the number line. You see the negative, you're thinking to move left on the number line. So plotting negative numbers on number lines isn't very difficult because you already have all the skills. You've been doing them with positive numbers your entire life, but now we're just introducing moving to the left on the number line. However, there is a different type of number line as well. Here's a horizontal line that we already looked at, right? It goes left and right. You have your positive numbers to the right of zero, negative numbers to the left. Sometimes though, you're gonna see it as a vertical number line. Now this is the exact same thing, it's just turned up and down. So your positive numbers are going to go up and your negative numbers are going to go down. You can use either one of them interchangeably, right? It doesn't matter, right? So positive is going to go to the right or it's going to go up and negative is going to go to the left or it's going to go down. If you have any experience with coordinate planes, you've used a vertical number line and a horizontal number line together. But vertical number lines also make sense in other real life examples such as temperature, right? We always see temperature on a thermometer going up and down or sea level when you're measuring the height of something or the depth of something in the ocean. You want to use a vertical number line because you can visualize it a little bit better, but you can use either one of them. If you want to plot positive three, you could plot it on your horizontal number line or your vertical number line. Positive is going to be to the right or up. If you want to do a negative three, right? You just move to the left of the zero, one, two, three units or you can move down one, two, three units on your vertical number line. You can show the value of a number on both the horizontal and the vertical. Let's take a look at an I do problem. So here it says, what value is the blue dot showing? Okay, so I'm always gonna start at zero, and I know, because my number line is already labeled, that it's gonna be 12, right? But it's going to be a positive 12, because I had to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 units, to the right, and to write a positive 12, you just write the number like you always have, just a 12, right? If there's no negative sign, that means it's positive. The next one says, what value is the purple dot showing? And again, it's gonna be 12, but it's going to be negative 12 because I had to move to the left on the number line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the purple dot is showing a negative 12. My third question says, how do these two dots relate? All right, well, they're both 12 away from zero. The positive is to the right, the negative is to the left, and they're on the opposite sides of zero, so it's almost like they're a mirror image of each other. We call those types of numbers opposite. To be an opposite number, you have to be the same distance away from zero and on the opposite side of zero. So these two dots are opposites of each other, okay? Let's dive into the we do problem. You should see both of these number lines on your notes and all we're going to do is we're going to fill these numbers in together okay remembering that positive is to the right and it's up if we're on a vertical number line and negative is going to be to the left or down on the vertical number line so if we're one unit away from zero we're at positive one if we're one unit to the left we are at negative one right if we're one unit up we're at positive one if we're one unit down we are at negative one and then the numbers work just like normal. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then to the left, we're gonna have a negative two, a negative three, a negative four, a negative five, a negative six, a negative seven, and a negative eight. Same thing on the vertical number line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we're going down, we have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, and negative eight. So these are the two types of number lines. Again, number lines are not only made of positive numbers, just like your teachers might have been teaching you your whole life. We also have negative numbers and they work as the opposite of positive, right? It's like a mirror image. There's a symmetry if you connect them, right? Kind of makes a rainbow. 
And the negative numbers go on forever, just like the positives. You can have a negative 1 million, just like you can have a positive 1 million. Thank you so much for checking out our introduction to negative numbers. We hope you will join us for the rest of our negative number unit. Check out our negative number song. We would love to have you subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Please leave a comment, like the video. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.